I've done a whole bunch of artsy projects lately. I want to make something functional. I was thinking metal, but I don't really honestly know that much about it. Is there anybody who wants to make a metal project? I'm making something metal. satisfying have this um, job to do here yep. um, in fusion doing the tool pass for it and everything okay. um, but we need to figure out the feeds and speeds in order to get nice finish and uh, not break all our bits basically um, <laughs> it's an important part of the job yeah. isn't it yeah, yeah. I'll give an overview of like uh, what I've done basically so we have our like keyboard path or a keyboard model here. Basically, we need to hold on to our piece. Okay. So I've made a fixture plate. We've prepared it earlier. So in the woodworking terms, this would be work holding. Basically. This is work holding, exactly. Okay. Unfortunately, we can't put wood screws through aluminum. <laughs> um, the idea being that we need something that is uh, rigid to hold everything, yep. but also precise. So I have a flip I want to do. Okay. Um, so we're going to mill both sides of these parts yep. uh, and I want to be able to line up basically each half of it as you've done with like the dinosaur before. Exactly. You need to be able to register them and line them up exactly so that when you do the flip they're you know lined up there aren't any yeah, seams. Yeah. I have the sort of tool paths already here, um, a bit of a sneak peek into what we're doing. I don't really know if these tool paths are good basically. <laughs> Uh, educated guesses. Uh, educated guesses, um, sort of basing off of previous jobs. I know Mike did the guitar and Johan's done some cutting on aluminum. Yep. Some of the differences specific to this project are like the size of the parts I'm dealing with. Yep. Um, so the scale is a lot different. When you're cutting something a lot bigger, you can use, basically you always want to have as rigid of a end mill as you can Absolutely. so that any deflection doesn't lead to chatter or poor cut in, inaccuracy in your cuts. Yep. So for something smaller, I'm forced to use smaller bits um, because they don't fit in the and uh, exactly uh, how small are you areas. Going so for this? I will be going for a 16th um, <laughs> end mill. This one I'm doing for two reasons. Um, one is so for some of the really small stuff in here, um, like this radius. That radius corner right is pretty there, tiny. Um, I can actually only fit this end mill. Really? Um, the part of that's on me because I designed it that way, but uh, <laughs> it will <clears throat> only fit something this small and yep. for that reason I have to use an end mill that is smaller than the radius so that you're not sort of just jamming it in the corner and, and uh, not able to cut. Basically we want to sort of do a trial run. I think I'm going to cut uh, either this piece or this piece. Um, using our, our test stuff. So by my count we got at least three bits going. At least, yes. Yeah, I think I'm going to set up probably four bits in the uh, machine. So the ATC is going to come in handy here for not yes. having to do manual bit changes. Yes, you, yes, it'll yes, just yes, zip, yes. zip, zip, zip. Yeah, I have the whole thing laid out, but I want to do a test on just a small piece. Yep. So I'm going to take the same tool paths. And I'm just going to basically, instead of using the setup with this fixture plate in this way, I'm going to grab a, a raw piece of stock downstairs. Okay. And yep. then I'm going to go put it in the vise uh, downstairs. And I'll do a rejig uh, re the setup in, in here to make it so that this part can be cut just as a single. So you can do exactly. the test pass. Yep. So, so. new bits, mm -hmm. tool pods are we're testing today. Feeds and speeds. We're testing to make sure they're dialed in for the whole thing. Yep. We're testing just one, not the entire thing today. Yep. And then uh, yeah. so we're gonna test it. We're gonna see if it works. If it doesn't work, yep. we're gonna come back. And if it does, then we're just that much cooler. Tool paths are pretty good. Uh, some of them are a bit, you know, cutting in air, a bit slow. Some are a bit too aggressive. Uh, I know Carson and uh, Scott got sprayed with some chips there. Uh, 
but uh, overall pretty good, I think. I um, think I might add a new bit in as well, uh, just to do a finishing pass so that things are you know, nice and shiny and not a uh, roughing end mill kind of thing. I really expected to break bits. Uh, you know, if that's maybe I'm being too conservative right now, uh, could add a bit more speed in certain areas maybe, but uh, not quite finished yet, so. So we want to tram the machine so that everything's square and we're going to level it first to set it up so that because the machine will sort of conform to the ground that it's on. Of course. That's what the leveling feet are for. Um, so we start from that base, make sure the frame's all square, and then we're going to we're going to level out our fixture plates. So wow. these are bolted down stiffly. I've already added a few shims to try to fix the the level uh, the, the level of it. Okay. Um, and then after that, we're going to make sure that the actual spindle is trammed so that uh, it's cutting a sort of flat cut. So I'm setting up our stock. Um, I have to mill some holes um, just to mount it up to our fixture plate. So I'm going to drill four holes in our plate here. The reason I'm doing four is so that we have one locating pin and one bolt to tighten it down. So when you flip, the dowel pin will now be the bolt hole and the bolt hole will now be the uh, dowel pin. So when it starts cutting, what, are, what exactly are you looking for to see if it's cutting properly? Obviously, not breaking bits is a big part of this. Is there something that's going to jump out at you as, hey, this is not cutting at the right feet or speed? I mean, you will definitely hear the chatter. Okay. If it's bad. So if it's d -d 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 -d. sounds terrible, it'll just sound like screeching kind okay. of noises. That's number one. You can also see, you know, if it looked not shiny and like, I don't know, the side Chunky of this. Chunky almost? Yeah. Okay. That'll be a big indicator that like, that's not good. Let's export our job here. I'm going to reorder some tools. Three eighths is one, quarter is two, um, eighth inch is three. You're just reordering. I'm just reordering so, so that this. this tool library matches the layout. ATC layout, the tool, okay. tools in the tool rack. Not Windex, WD-40. I was going to ask if you were using any sort of coolant or lubricant and yep. why are we doing that? Like, um, is so it necessary? Uh, it is def definitely necessary for this job. Okay. Um, basically, you want to have lubricant so that the tool can evacuate chips nicely and okay. it doesn't overheat. Overheat, because um, heat is not your friend. Heat is not the friend Same of as wood, yep. any of this stuff. Um, aluminum is a material that very quickly will gum up oh, okay. uh, uh, a bit. So it's necessary. You really need to basically make sure that it it's can get out of it and it doesn't get stuck to the bit. Now that we've gotten everything prepped here, all of our setups done, we've put our fixture on, we've uh, squared everything up, ready to start carving. So let's uh, go and initialize our tool rack and then we'll be ready to go. John, I missed the finish of this car. Tell me how everything finished up and what's been going on. Finished the other side. Um, initially, I had wanted to do a flip and just do sort of one at a time and yep. then prepare one for later, but uh, wanted to go through again to do some feeds and speeds. This one went pretty well, but there are a few cuts on it that were fine, but a bit aggressive. Yep. Um, <laughs> yep. 
But you um, only broke one bit doing all yes, of this. Yes, yes. And yeah, that yeah. was because of an aggressive feed. And, like, that, yeah, that, yeah, it was a bit too too much. It got chip packed. Um, once you dialed it, everything else went smooth. Went great, yep. Helped also to reduce some of the sort of air cutting and speed yeah. it up a bit. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, that was one of the things that was uh, wasting a lot of time. For sure. Um, but yeah, I think uh, sort of dialed in a bit more now and ready to do the other side. So basically. you are about to do flip milling on the sucker now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about that. Is is aluminum any different than wood for flip milling, or are we talking the same process? Uh, obviously, precision is different. Yeah, I would say like the principle is the same. Want to basically line up two sides of the coin, yep. so to say. Um, the difference being is like if you have a, a tool path that maybe will drive into something, you could have more of a chance of breaking your bit just because. Uh, metal is more unforgiving, so, so if you're not lining up and you might like have some stock left over somewhere oh, when you okay. do a flip mill, okay. like if, uh, uh, for instance, I, I had one of the tool paths that sort of drove through my tabs here, yeah, and you know that suddenly slamming into a large chunk of material could could break a bit. Okay, um, so the precision aspect there is important, and then also obviously just like making sure that my part itself lines up. Uh, it's sort of more important for a metal piece or a part that would fit together rather than just like sort of an art piece. Exactly. Um, okay. Uh, but if if you wanted to make a part out of wood, it has the same principles. Same principles. Basically. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. All right, John. From what I've gathered, you are done carving. Tell me where we are at. All right. Uh, yeah, we finished uh, relatively unscathed. Got our front and back pieces all done here. I've done some final polishing to remove the tabs and stuff. Uh, I'd say the carve went relatively well. A few things that were kind of came to bite me after, you know, not preparing beforehand okay. a bit better. Okay. Um, but uh, overall, pretty pretty good, I'd say. I want to hear more about some of these things that came back to bite you, to be totally yeah. honest. That's... Um, <clears throat> well, a lot of it was kind of like, um, just because of the time frame, trying to rush the cam by doing that, you know, leading to more aggressive cuts and stuff that probably shouldn't have been so much. Okay. Um, and then the big thing um, in terms of like early prep was planning out the operations. So when I came to do the flip, there are a few things where like the tabs were in the wrong place in terms of the Z. So that that's right. Yeah. When I came to carve it, it was uh, a bit hairy with uh, the thickness of the remaining material holding yep. on to the parts. One of the things I've learned through this is that metal is less forgiving for precision than wood. So if yeah. you've got a little bit of extra vibration in there, it's going to yeah. result in not quite as clean a cut or a little more. Yeah, I, I would say it's just kind of like, it's down to the, the cutting forces generally. Yep. Um, so like when you cut wood, it's like a pretty soft material. So your bit doesn't have to work as hard. Your machine doesn't have to work as hard. Yep. Um, so then the, the work holding doesn't have to you know, support that force. Carving's done, went about as good as it could. Mm -hmm. um, learned some things. Where are we going with this from here? Uh, as you can see, I have one that's already assembled, uh, I've prepared earlier. Uh, this is pretty much what I need to do with this one. Um, okay. I've just finalized the assembly, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, just kind of put the circuit board in, do some final soldering. Um, screw in all of the little panels and stuff and then attach it. That will be relatively easy. Uh, and then, yeah, basically done and start using it. I didn't really have that great of a plan for it, but basically I've, I've made a split keyboard, uh, like you might see like an ergonomic kind of style keyboard, intentionally using tool paths that you could avoid, you know, typically if your end mill is coming down straight, you don't really want to do a, an, angled face. an angled face. It would be a lot easier if it was just square and of straight. Um, so that gave me a lot of opportunities to learn about like, you know, what sort of roughing strategies you want to do, what sort of finishing things you want to do for um, like making sure that this finish is really nice. Nice and smooth, um, exactly. Smooth. Um, you know, using a ball end mill to come in and, and finish everything off so it's not stair-steppy. I guess we'll just put it back together and start using it, hopefully. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, hope you learned something as much as I did. Um, make sure to leave uh, any comments or anything if you have any interest in, uh, you know, asking questions about the project. Uh, make sure to keep up with us on any of the uh, various social medias we have, and uh, I'll get back to assembling this thing. 
See you later.